What's up everybody? I'm Michael Chris, three years running bestseller at Shine On. Now I'm the CMO of Shine On. I wanted to thank you so much for checking out our YouTube video. And if you like this kind of content, I want you to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I hope you enjoy the video. What's up? Wow. How's it going, Jim? <laughs> Oh my gosh, that what? took me back to like, what was that, 1995 or something? Yeah, the Wasabi. Uh, <laughs> so <commercial>. old. <laughs> Here I am thinking I'm old. 85, man, 85. That was, was not 85. No, no, I was born in 85. Oh, okay, no. so I am I'm still older than you. kind of get old, actually. It's kind of... Yeah, I'm, I'm there. I'm I'm older than you, so... I wonder what percentage of our audience doesn't get that reference. <laughs> I do it literally every single time. I have a There's still a segment of our audience that does not understand it. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to uh, this week's Coffee with Michael. It's going to be a good one. I'm probably catching a ton of people off guard this week because we're moving the time of Coffee with Michael. We normally do it at 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern time. In the future, I think we're going to shift to more of a 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern time, uh, uh, go live. Uh, we're gonna try to do that so we can accommodate more of our folks that are over in Europe. Uh, 2 p.m. starts to get a little bit late for them over in Europe. So we're gonna try to shift things a little bit earlier and hopefully allow more people to join this live because that is where the magic happens. All right, what's Great. up everybody? Dave Mackey, Sophie, <clears throat> what's up buddy, Prakash? Thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate you. Let's uh, go. This week, we're going to be talking about the 100, 100, 100 challenge. We got a little bit of a boot camp we're going to take everybody through. So we launched this challenge last week. And um, uh, we had over 1,000 signups in 24 hours. Pretty incredible. The, the challenge is really simple. It's about making 100 designs over 100 days, hopefully to make $100,000 uh, in revenue is we move into Q4. It's an extremely, extremely doable thing for anybody in the print-on-demand space. Literally, all you got to do is follow the process. It'll get you there. Um, and also, your chances of hitting a winner in 100 tests is actually quite high. Um, every time I've done it in the past, I usually hit a pretty good-sized winner, especially in peak Q4 time, within 50 designs or so. So doing 100 uh, should put you there. So pretty awesome stuff. Uh, let's see. We got Stephanie here saying 8 a.m., is coffee time in Cali? Yes, dig it. Uh, Prakash says, best time for him here in Australia. It's 1.30 a.m. Get out a cup of coffee, dude. <laughs> Get your day going early. <laughs> yeah, Paul. Um, Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's up, everybody? So, hey, if uh, you're joining for the first time, go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook and make sure you give StreamYard permissions to show me your name or else you show up as Facebook user. And I don't know who I'm talking to. Okay, before we get into the good stuff, we've got a little bit of a toast. Do we not? So, everybody, raise up your glasses, mugs, bottles, and flasks, and join me now for the Digital Marketer's Toast. Here's to more conversions, more cash, cheap CPMs, and lower CACs, to higher CTRs, much higher CBRs, to enable ad accounts and big bank accounts, upsells, downsells, and cross-sells, to winning products and repeat sales, and to the thing that everybody knows, the riches are in the niches, but also your email flows. Are you ready? Drink. Ah, there we go. Dude, are you sporting a Bob Ross mug? Yes. I, it's a special occasion, so I had to bust out the Bob Ross. And see, when it's, it's heat activated, so once you get the coffee or tea in there, the artwork shows up. Dude, something tells me you get way more out of our, our toast drinking from a Bob Ross mug than I do. Yeah, I'm feeling I'm gonna have some to extra vibes here. I'm gonna go. Here. We speak. We, we got to watch out for him. He's gonna start making some happy trees. <laughs> <laughs> Little happy trees. All right, everybody. Let's do it. Okay, the 100, 100, 100 challenge. First, testimonials. Cr Lopez did two thousand dollars in profit. Total beginner here. Congratulations, buddy. Love to see our wit, our beginners, especially hit success right out of the gate. Uh, it's quite incredible. Um, you've got some swag coming your way. Thanks for sharing your success. As I'm learning as I go, I'm fine tuning things, warming up my pixel. Come Q4, I'm pushing the pedal. The metal want to say thank you to Ronnie McKenzie and Dan Hurt. Dan Hurt. So everybody knows Ronnie around here. He's the, he's the uh, fun uh, going Aussie guy. 
uh, to put some videos in here occasionally. He did a course with us. You can check out the course at jugger.shineon.com if you want to look into that. Dan Hurt, though, is another longtime uh, member here, and Dan is a great seller. He did. He put together a free YouTube course. Uh, just search for Dan Hurt inside of the Facebook group, and you'll be able to find a link to his free YouTube course that he put together. I think he just recently smashed like $200,000 in revenue in like a month or something like that. So go check him out. Pretty cool. Uh, says he learned a lot from them. And then Michael and the Shine On crew as well. Uh, we have Jim and Zappy with us. For those of you who don't know, they're uh, on our media buying team here. And they're putting out the shots of espresso that you're seeing every week. And then we hope to continue going forward. So we've got a whole crew of people here trying to help you get as much success as possible, especially as we move into uh, Q4. So Bob Ross. Dan's a man. I'm here, Michael. Well, thank you, Facebook user, for never <laughs> letting me down. <laughs> never letting me down. All right, next, we've got Praveen. Let me get that uh, comment out of here. Uh, Hi, peeps. Got my first sale through Facebook ads using the platform. The stats here for 24 hours starting one ad set and one ad. Uh, Facebook didn't record it, probably due to iOS. Thanks to Michael, John, Luna, Carlos. All the Shine Honors helped on my journey. Apologies if I missed anyone. Congratulations, Praveen. Love to see the first sale. It, it shows everybody that this is possible uh, for literally, literally anyone. doesn't matter who you are, what walk of life you come from, what country you're in. Uh, I personally believe Shine On is the greatest entrepreneurial opportunity in the history of the world. I've gone over that repeatedly. Um, there's just nothing else like it on the planet, in my humble opinion. Uh, congratulations, Praveen. Thanks for sharing. You've got some swag coming your way, buddy. Next, we have one. Oh, boy. Uh we have one from this gentleman here. Thank you so much for sharing. I apologize, but I'm worried if I take a stab at this, it's going to be, I'm going to fall short in so many ways. I have a lot of faults as a human being. And uh, yeah. So anyway, thank you, Eric, Luna, Michael, Kirsta, and all the wonderful people here in the group. I just reached another milestone today. $200,000 in revenue since March 1. That's amazing. 22% profit margin. So you're looking at like 40 grand profit here. Hmm. Increased AOV from 60 to 79 bucks. This, this is this is amazing. This is amazing. If I were you, I'd be typing his name into the chat, the uh, Facebook group right now and seeing if he's dropped any other knowledge bombs in the group. Worked really hard over the last month. So proud to have hired three interns who are in their final year of college to help me out part time. To keep it simple and the cost low. That's amazing. It's not an easy journey, to be honest. For those things, just spend a few designs, pouring some money on the media buying side will not work. Take my word. One need to run as a proper business, entrepreneurial mindset, uh, juggle multiple priorities, most importantly, focusing on your niche. The message card is going to be a big takeaway from today's mm -hmm. Coffee with Michael uh, and design blending. Uh, let's see that your, your customers are searching for. So basically, he's saying put the customer first, create something that they want to buy. And, and really focus on making sure you have a great phrase and message card. So thank you so much for sharing this, buddy. Really appreciate it. I think he goes by TK. TK. I, TK for short is, uh, I can do that. So thank you so much, TK, for sharing this. This is amazing. Really appreciate it. You've got some swag, some shine on swag coming your way, buddy. And then finally, Dave Mackey. Dave, or David, uh, I feel like I know him. I just jumped to Dave. Mm. He watches almost all of the Coffee with Michaels. Uh, religiously. He's always participating. He's a common name around here. Uh, I'm just super thrilled to see him having success uh, with Shine On. He did $2,000 in revenue, been at it for six months. Uh, best advice he says he's received is keep creating and keep testing. And I can second that as well. I mean, that is that is the trick to this is you kind of look, there's a little bit of a volume play here at, at, at Shine On or any print on demand, really any type of e-commerce. And you kind of have to outlast your failures a little bit. You're going to throw stuff at the wall and most of it's not going to stick. Some stuff is going to stick. And you, you just got to stick around long enough to kind of see that happen before your eyes. So congratulations, David. Really appreciate uh, you sharing your testimony here. You've got some swag coming your way. All right. Finally, we got one quick announcement and then we're going to get into the meat. Um, inside the Shine On platform now. So if you go to the platform and you sign in, Right there in the dashboard, if you scroll down just a little bit underneath your, your stats, you're going to see a new kind of quick start course that we created. Uh, we called it How to Get Your First Sale. 
There's like 16 videos in there that walk you through how to use the platform, how to run your first ads, how to create message cards. It, it's it's full of some really awesome, free, very valuable content. Go check that out. Um, anybody can take advantage of this right now. It's right inside your platform account. So if you're brand new and you're kind of struggling, you're like, hey, how do I get started? Or you, you don't understand how all this works. Watch this because it will tell you how to bring all of it together uh, in one kind of coherent package so that you can go from zero to your first sale. That was the entire goal of this little quick start course, by the way, was to help you go from no sale to one sale. Right. And we cover all the steps required to do that. So go check that out. Um, I think it's probably like two hours of content, maybe a little more, maybe a little bit less. We tried to keep it dense and short so that you can consume it as a newbie, not get lost in the weeds and all this extra detail or anything like that, but just kind of digest uh, and understand what's actionable so that you can move forward and get your first sale. So go check that out. Um, finally, you're going to want to keep your eyes peeled later today. We've got a uh, another update coming at you. I've got a, about a 10 minute video that's going to post a little bit later, and it's going to go over all kinds of new stuff, including some new product releases that we have coming in Q4. And they are, they are amazing too, by the way. I'm super stoked about the new products. Uh, there's one of them in particular. I've never seen any print-on-demand company do. And uh, I think folks are going to be very, very happy with it. I, I think we're going to have a ton of sellers that easily add six figures to their bank account with that product alone. Um, and we've got a bunch. we got a bunch. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled. Watch that video later. All right. You guys ready to get into this? Let's go. Yes. Okay, so Jim and Zappy, um, are you guys participating in the challenge? No, I am not currently participating. I have my own challenge. <laughs> yeah, we sort of. <laughs> I'm, well, I, are, are I was not. Products? Yes, I don't. And, I don't. Then some. Yeah, I mean, we're testing it, but we're not in the challenge. Like, why would like? I don't want to beat out all the other folks. <laughs> You, pro <laughs> <laughs> you probably, you probably, but I mean, how many designs do you guys think you're churning through a week? 30, 35, at least, 40? At least. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you're, you're knocking the challenge out every three weeks. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, we are. Um, now you guys though, you're doing all kinds of tests because you're trying mm -hmm. to get good knowledge, good insights for the shots of espresso. Um, so you're doing things that are even above and beyond kind of the tried and true testing process because you're trying to be there kind of on the you're all, you're, you're trying to push the edge, be on the edge. All yeah, time. like that's uh, that's one of the things that we're so excited about by by being uh, within Shine on is that, you know, we have the latitude and the trust to go out and and try stuff. Right. We have no idea if it works, but let's go try it. Let's be that trailblazer and report back. And, you know, this is what worked. This is what didn't work. This is what you can do. Like um right now like we're today's day one but we're testing this brand new methodology of sending traffic directly to a facebook shop right yeah. like who does that but we're trying it i have no idea if it's going to work well or not uh i have no idea what can track and what what's going to show up in ads manager because it's all day one right but it's not on a pixel because it's in facebook still so, so that's the cutting edge stuff we're talking about when eric says um, I can't remember how he puts it exactly, but he basically says we lose so much money on behalf of our sellers because we're constantly <laughs> testing to find new products, new viral products. We're doing CRO testing on the platform to see what works and what doesn't work. I mean, we are constantly spending tons and tons and tons of money to make sure we're bringing you uh, the best uh, like world class stuff literally across the board, not just um, in products and on the platform. But like now we're trying to do the same thing on the knowledge side of the house. So we have Jim and Zappy in here, both experienced media buyers, constantly pushing the edge of the envelope uh, week after week, testing things that are just kind of goofier that Jim thinks of, uh, you know, in the middle of the night, just to see if it'll Pretty work. Pretty much. Yeah, because then we have something <laughs> we can report back. So let me ask those Zappy. So did you participate in this challenge last year? Because I know you had a winner kind of moving all through Q4. Mm -hmm. Uh, did that come out of this challenge last year or what was your kind of game plan uh, then? Yeah, that's interesting. I, I was just thinking about this the other day. I I remember it coming up and maybe I signed up. I probably didn't actually do it, to be honest. But what I, but it was probably about this time, though, last year that I really started seeing the potential of what Shion was doing with the platform. Um, so even if I wasn't doing 100 different products, I was 
really understanding the what value was being provided with you know just being able to use the platform not having to deal with customer service being able to just you know you don't have to pay up front for your products you know once you sell then you get the money it was like there were so many compounding factors i was learning about with shine at that point i'm like you know it's been a rough year and this would be a great opportunity to take a lot of that customer support off of my hands and just dive in so um yeah i mean i think it was really october things really started picking up within you know within a month uh, was where the bulk of my sales came in from like, you know, I think it was maybe November to December, but anyways, October to December, I mean, not only was it a hundred thousand, it was more like 300,000. Uh, and that's, that's using just the platform, you know? Yeah. So there's just so much potential. And, uh, and you also guys. did something that I typically don't recommend people do, which is you had something that was a little bit more Christmas themed and, uh, yeah. Ronnie, uh, blew it out of the water with something else I typically don't recommend people do, which is which is kind of he injected some humor into his stuff. So we're really seeing like uh, there are no rules with this, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. If you have a creative idea, it resonates with your audience, it'll sell. So let's back up. I'm not doing a very good job selling this, bringing you two on apparently. Um, so <laughs> the 100, 100, 100 <laughs> challenge, it, it is a process more than anything, right? So yeah. Um, it's a little bit of a mouthful, but the whole idea is that you create a hundred designs, a hundred phrases, a hundred tests, right? So basically you're going to take a hundred phrases, pair them with a design and a product, and you're going to throw a hundred of these things at the wall, right? You're casting your fishing line a hundred times, right? Uh, over the course of a hundred days uh, in the hopes of making a hundred thousand dollars in revenue, right? That is the goal. It's so it's the whole challenge, the 100, 100, 100, it's a mouthful, but it encapsulates the whole process and kind of the whole vision here. Um, the Can I update my answer? Days, what's that? Can I update my answer? <laughs> sure. But don't so when you, no, no, I'm not going to change the answer. I'm just going to frame it better. Uh, so when you said, hey, have you guys signed up for the challenge, right? We didn't go into the opt-in and, and sign up for the challenge. That's it's an unfair uh, competition, right? So it's uh, we're not signing we're not signing up for this particular challenge. However, um, our entire SOPs around is this challenge. So it's not just Q4, but it's it's every day, right? So it's it's not like this is. I, I love how we frame this for our sellers. To be able to get them excited and obviously this is the best time of year to do heavy testing like this yeah. because there if you yeah. do it if you actually put the work in it's, there is zero there's like such a small chance that you will fail if you don't give up if you follow candy through from a baby right exactly. so yeah. you know so when you say you know did you sign up we did not sign up on shineonchallenge.com we're not going to be on the leaderboard but internally we do this day in and day out. That's how we run our media buying. Yeah. So, you know, I originally thought of this because last year I was kind of like, you know, like I can fairly consistently hit some pretty big winners moving into Q4. I mean, every Q4 I've tried, I've been able to find something that, that easily does six figures or more. And I just thought, what is my process? And, you know, like when I boiled it down, it's really, I just test a ton of stuff in a yep. short and rapid amount of time, mm -hmm. right during Q4. And I thought, well, what's what's a way I can kind of port that over and make it accessible to complete beginners? And that's where this whole challenge was born. So at any rate, if you're interested in the challenge, I think you can only sign up for it for like a month, right? Um, meaning the registration is gonna close at some point. So if you wanna join the challenge, make sure you head over to shineonchallenge.com, shineonchallenge.com. We have a special Facebook group where we're supporting members that are in the challenge. We also have a leaderboard. So once you get in the challenge, we'll actually connect uh, the leaderboard with your Shine On account. And we, we have a whole point system around the number of designs that you create, the number of sales you get and things like that. So we're really trying to make this a fun challenge uh, so that you can join. We, we're trying to create a structure of accountability, right? That is something that we found is, you know, it's easy to just kind of get lost and feel like you're on your own in Q4. But when you have this challenge you're participating in with a bunch of other people and you're seeing the leaderboard, it creates a structure of accountability and it just kind of eggs you on all quarter long. And that's really what we want to do. We want to keep you engaged. 
focused. We want to give you a simple process where you can take action and get some success. So this entire copy with Michael is about the challenge. So let's keep going here. But if you want to join, shineonchallenge.com, shineonchallenge.com. All right. So 100 days, 100 products, $100,000, right? Covered that. So first, we're going to go through kind of the steps, right? We're going to go over the process that you can apply to this challenge to be as successful as possible. Now, this entire deck that I'm going over will be downloadable as a PDF after this call. So what you'll be able to do is look at this post right here, refresh it probably 10 minutes after this uh, uh, coffee with Michael. And there's going to be a download link in there where you can actually go and download this entire deck is a PDF. So you can keep this and refer to it in the future as much as possible. I'm sure we'll also put the link over in the Shine On Challenge group as well so that you can find the uh, the PDF there. So we're going to blow through this super fast. We're going to have a little bit of Q&A at the end. So everybody buckle up and uh, bear with us. So product creation. There are a few elements you can take into consideration creating a new product. You need your phrase, right? Your design, your product market fit, and your product page. Now, uh, Quickly, I'm going to ask Jim and Zappy, what do you think is the most important part of all four of these? And I have my answer, but I'll let you guys go first. Zappy, go ahead. Long hair. And then I'll go. Long hair. Dang it, I am out. <laughs> I am already. Trend here. I, I have to grow my hair out. <laughs> well, that wasn't one phrase. of my choices. I mean, I mean your phrase. <laughs> it's always the phrase that pays. Yes. <clears throat> uh, yeah. I concur. I would also say the phrase... Um, definitely is what drives that emotional connection to the whole product and ties it all together. Yeah, I, I agree as well. It's the phrase 100%. Um, I would say if you're new, 80% of your time should be trying to finding a phrase that resonates with your audience. Um, this is really where the magic happens. If you get a winning phrase, you can, you can have a okay design and you can have poor skills like with your ads and still do okay. I mean, you can still do pretty good. But if you have a crap phrase, it doesn't matter how great your design is. It doesn't matter how amazing you are at Facebook ads. It's just putting lipstick on a pig. I mean, you're just, you're not going to get anywhere uh, with that. All right, cool. Um, here's some just simple steps on product creation. Uh, it's When it comes to your phrase, uh, we use or we see the most success anyway is probably what I should say. When folks use the greeting card format, so it says to my wife, to my daughter, uh, to my soulmate, that kind of thing. And then typically you can end it with love your husband forever and always your husband from your husband, something like that. You don't have to have that, but typically uh, we see that it works pretty well. Uh, you should try to niche down, right? Don't run something that's super general, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, to my loved one or something like that. Like you need to be specific enough that it's relational. So to my daughter, to my soulmate, to my girlfriend, to my hot wife is one that we see a lot. It's that kind of thing. Uh, it needs to move people emotionally. We say it's the phrase that pays. If they cry, they'll buy. It needs to resonate with somebody. If you can move them emotionally, they'll be much more likely to buy your product. We like to keep the phrases short enough to be legible, right? But long enough that they have maximum emotional impact. And uh, Zap and Jim, I got a question for you on that in just a second. Make mm -hmm. sure your phrase has no uh, grammar or spelling issues, right? If English is not your first language, highly recommend get a buddy uh, that does speak English as a first language and let them kind of proofread your stuff. Uh, Grammarly.com, Hemingway.com, some of those uh, free kind of grammar and spelling checkers are your friend when it comes to this. Google uh, Translate can help too. Pages. Google uh, Translate can help too. There you go. Google Translate. The it, it really is probably best if you have a buddy, because mm -hmm. even if you have no grammar or spelling issues, there are still some things that you can kind of mess up and you don't even realize uh, yeah. that you're messing up. Uh, and, and if you have no you, friends, you could use Fiverr. Yeah, this is true. Uh, for five right. bucks, so five bucks you can get it translated. Yep. Yeah. Good call. It also post it in the group. I'm sure if you post them in the challenge group, uh, you'll get tons of people that will come mm -hmm. in and, and help you as well. And then finally, um, use fonts that are easy to read. So when you're starting here, I, I've seen this a million times. People tend to gravitate towards whatever their strengths are. If you have like a graphic design background, you're going to spend a ton of time uh, like on the design. And part of that is going to be like you're going to be wanting to get creative with your fonts and making sure they're pretty and they flow and whatever else. I'm telling you right now, like. You can waste a lot of time because if the if, it, if the phrase doesn't have the magic in it, 
It doesn't matter what design skills you put over it. You're not going to turn that thing around. The other thing is if you get too crazy with the fonts, it can, that alone can be a turnoff. Uh, cursive fonts, look, there are no rules here, but there are some guidelines. And cursive fonts, I'm telling you, it, it can make it kind of difficult to read. Uh, sometimes the, uh, what are they called? The, is it sans serif? Like mm, this here, where it's font. like Times New Roman and stuff like that. With, a where the, uh, serif fonts have the little things that come off the edges yeah, and sans if, doesn't. If you're not careful, sometimes your serif fonts can even be kind of dicey. So you just be careful with the font. So back, here's the question I was going to ask you guys. So we've got these guidelines in here, short enough to read, long enough to have maximum emotional impact. I know you guys have actually done some analysis on top sellers across the board to figure out how many lines or words uh, we typically seen a top seller. What did you guys find? Uh, so usually it's between four and six lines. And Zappy, if I'm correct, it's around 55 words as a maximum. Is that right? Recently, we were trying to keep it more to 55 because then we're, it starts getting to that extra line point. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll fudge a little bit sometimes with size, but I mean, the larger always is better so that people can read it, especially on ads. Yeah, because remember, it's it's not so much because it, it makes the best gift. You're trying to stop people from scrolling on Facebook or on Instagram, right? So if they have to stop on their phone, which is where most people are going to see the ads, and they stop, they have to be able to read the thing. If not, yeah. they're just going to keep scrolling, right? So that's the why it's so important to make sure it's clear, legible, and the size is enough, and there's not too much text on there, because otherwise it's going to be hard for someone to really pay attention, right? We're dealing with three-second attention spans here. Yeah, 100% agree with that. 100%. You, you, it's very easy, especially if you're a designer and you're on your desktop and you're in Photoshop or wherever you, you <laughs> like to be to design Canva, maybe. It's very easy to forget that, like, 95% of your traffic is going to be on this device right here, right? And when they see it, they need to be able to read it without clicking into the image or having to zoom or anything like that. So I agree 100%. Any other uh, insights you want to share when it comes to the phrase? I would not be uh, afraid to test dropping the end salutation. Uh, it's something that we're doing or testing so that we can broaden our reach. Uh, and it, it, it follows along with what Hallmark does, right? So like in Hallmark, you always have to my wife, you walk into the store, it's like, I need a birthday card, a Christmas card, and then I need to who I'm giving it to, right? So it's a birthday to my wife, but then it doesn't, it says love sometimes, but it doesn't say your husband, right? So it's, it almost like beckons them to sign their own name. So, um, I'm not saying that don't do love your husband, but I am saying you may want to test it if it's a, to a broader thing. Like if, uh, if it's to my daughter, right, that could be from mom or dad. So don't True. necessarily, you know, specify it. Yeah. This is, this is one of those things where it's like, there are guidelines, but no rules. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Um, one of the things I did in a, a product I had doing fairly well for me last year was, um, I actually used the salutation to inject humor. So you guys have probably all seen the ones where it's like from your, from your grumpy this or from your um, ugly that or whatever. Like it, it, it was an opportunity with this particular phrase to inject some humor. And I did that and it actually worked. So uh, yeah, this is one of those things. There are guidelines, uh, but very few rules, I think. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's talk about some uh, places where you can do phrase research here. Um, so look, they're really the sky's the limit when it comes to phrase research. Uh, Travis Patel, who was on last week, is going to be recording a video soon where he's just going to walk into like a Target or a Walmart or something and just start reading some of the, the Hallmark cards. Mm -hmm. I know um, we've had some other sellers in the past do things like Albert did this where he just he straight up went into, I think it was Hallmark or uh, uh, like a CVS. And I think he just he just took screenshots of a bunch of or, or pictures of a bunch of uh, cards that he said he saw that had good phrases. And then he Franken phrased some stuff together and it worked for him really well. So my question to you guys, I mean, the sky's the limit. There's so many places to go. What are you doing now um, to find your phrases? Zappy, I'll let you go first, then I'll answer. Oh, yeah, so one of my favorites, actually, is to is to listen to a lot of different songs. Most people have different songs that they or genres they listen to. You know, find some, you know, if you're doing a two wife, find some, find some love songs and just start listening and listen for specific lines that really stick out to you or things that sound sound good and start, you know, making 
uh, you can make a list of different lines that you're hearing from the songs and sort of start using that as a, a seed list for putting together Frank and phrasing something together. So I think songs are great. Um, How do you avoid the copyright um, or like infringement issues with that? Yeah. And I certainly don't want to mislead anybody on that one. You just, it's about rephrasing and rewording a lot of different things. Sometimes there's a heart, there's a heart to the specific message. You don't have to replicate the whole thing. It's more about, you know, just, yeah, I don't know how else to say it, the heart of what the. Like, like you kind of find the, the punch lines or the parts of the lyrics that, that really resonate. And then you're saying you just, you grab that and you just kind of modify it a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's something that it. you can work with. I mean, certainly, you know, we're talking about going into an actual Hallmark store to take it to another level. There's a lot of different greeting card websites. Um, certainly even, you know, even Etsy is a place that you can look at, at cards. Um, just pull them right up on your computer and start looking through and find some things that are interesting. Again, just taking, you know, taking ideas or take, dif use different ideas from different areas and, you know, start putting together some of your own phrases. A lot of things for me, it'll be like, I'll just hear an idea or, oh, I like that idea that I, I'm seeing or hearing in the song. And it just sparks something else. It's like, oh, you know, I just take it and make it my own, you know. So I think that's a good strategy, too, in general. Jim, what do you think? Uh, for me, I do two different things right now. Um, I'll go to hallmark.com uh, and go by recipient and event or whatever. Uh, I usually, if it's for like wife, I'll dive into the anniversary section. Um, and then I'll do the online version of what uh, Travis was talking about last week, where it's you go through the different cards and you take out little bits and pieces of each and you stick them together as a Franken phrase. Uh, in addition, um, we're testing, and this may not be an available solution uh, for brand new people with a limited budget, um, but it, I want to throw it out there that the options out there uh, is to use something like Upwork or Fiverr and hire a creative writer or a poet um, or someone that has that. Like I'm a very analytical person i am not the most creative guy on the planet so for me to tap into s that side of myself it's, it's a little bit harder for me to do um so if you're having a hard time doing that and you can afford um you know a, a little bit of money for some phrase ideas even if it's just like write me one phrase per niche and then hope maybe they'll write something and then okay that sparks my my creative juices and I can create 30, 40 different variations off of that. Um, so dude, this is why I think you guys make an amazing team because like literally as Zappy was explaining kind of his process, one of the things that stood out to me is, is Zappy, you seem, you seem to be a very creative person. Like the, the design you came up with even last year for Q4, I just, I never would have thought of that ever. Mm. Um, and you continually kind of surprise me with that. Like, uh, you know, we're in the Slack channels and I see some of the uh, stuff you come up with for phrases or a revision or whatever. And it's just I, my brain wouldn't go there. I'm a little bit more like a gym where I'm a little more analytical and I like to have a kind of a process and I like to approach things more methodically. But really, you kind of need both, I think. Um, so whoever you are right, listening to this, um, you're going to have to lean on your strengths uh, a little bit, I think, when it comes to finding the phrase. But um, you don't want to skip out on this part, right? The phrase is the most important part. Yeah. So literally scour the internet, check out greeting cards. Uh, Zappy's right. I've actually looked at the Etsy greeting card section. It's, it's full of gold. Anna Beck had uh, an incredible method that she shared where she actually goes online and looks for open letters, like open mm -hmm. letter to my daughter, uh, to my wife, to my son, whatever. And I was just like, holy cow, I bet that's mm -hmm. full of gold, full of gold. You find an open letter that's gone viral, it, it, it's because there's there's something in it that resonates. So <clears throat> literally, just be creative. Don't box yourself into any one thing. Be creative. Go out there, tap all the sources, and start to compile this kind of phrase database of things that uh, resonate with you. And then you can mm -hmm. frank and phrase some things together. So, all right, let's keep going here. Uh, I'm only going to touch on some of this stuff. I'm going to spend time on what I think is important and the rest of it, I'm going to try to blow through a little bit. Again, you can download this after uh, and spend as much time as you want on these other sections. Uh, so when it comes to uh, product creation, your design, keep it simple, right? Make sure your design complicate complements the uh, phrase. Uh, make sure it's such that the phrase is not covered or blocked by the jewelry item. That's something I see a lot of people do is they'll... Mm -hmm. They'll spend an hour on a design 
and they got the phrase in there and they're using the fonts and it's looking amazing. They've sprinkled some magic on it and then they go upload it to the platform and the product comes right down and it covers up the words, right? It's like, you don't want to find yourself in that situation. Uh, don't use elements. It may turn some of the buyers away. So again, these are guidelines, uh, not rules. Okay. Uh, yep. It's important that I say that. So um, sometimes I've seen people put like images of people on the, the, the message cards and those people have identifiable traits. Like maybe they're slim or maybe they're bigger. Maybe they have blonde hair. Maybe they're young and they're not old. And it's like when you do things like that, like keep in mind that if the buyer can't resonate or identify with what's on the message card, the likelihood of them buying it is probably going to go down. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind when you're when you're doing your design. This is why I like things that are simple, more kind of elegant with like abstract decal and decor on it, things like that. The other thing is for your background, try to use shades that are darker or lighter, right? And will provide contrast when you put text on it. Try to avoid all the stuff in the middle of the value spectrum here. And it's and the only reason I say that is because it tends to wash out fonts. When you use colors here in the middle, these really bright, poppy kind of colors, and then you try to use fonts that are on one end of the value spectrum or the other, it, sometimes it won't provide enough contrast and it just, people can't read it. So what I like to do with my, my backgrounds is use something lighter or darker and then uh, use fonts that provide contrast. So Jim and Zappy, when it comes to your testing, because I know you guys have tested the the, what, the backgrounds extensively, what have you found is is working the best right now? Really, it's it's sticking with just like you said, the opposite sides of the spectrum, mm -hmm. white textured backgrounds, or sometimes black textured backgrounds, or black with some sort of a nice gold or silver outline around it. No other no other images in the background, so it really just provides some nice contrast with the jewelry. It stands out in the feed. And, uh, you know, can look really elegant without, you know, being overdone. So, yeah, we've, we've tried quite a few. We, we're, we're still, we'll probably still continue to try to beat some of those. Again, there's always exceptions, um, certainly that can work. Yeah, but, there's some general uh, guidelines, too, that work better for uh, different niches. Like uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, in the wife niche, we're seeing a little bit better results in like the darker spectrum of things. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean every card needs to be black, right? Because if everyone did the exact same thing, then that floods the market and we get banner blindness. So don't just be like, all right, everything's black. Um, but the darker spectrum uh, with white text or lighter text seems to be working well. Uh, in other niches, though, that's not the case. In other niches, we see that a white or lighter background works better. So if you are uh, finding success in one niche and you want to go to another niche, keep that same background template the same, but then understand that you it may not be. You may eventually want to run a test to, to do light versus dark. Yeah, no, I dig that. So basically... Um you're kind of in agreement with, with kind of what I outlined here. Plus you're just saying yes. you're going to have to kind of test it because each niche is just a little bit. Uh, Correct. Different. Which the good news so is once it, test dark, test light. Um, right. And you should and be able to find your feet. Yeah. One of the suggestions I would say is really focus on one niche to start. Like if you're entering this as a brand new person in Q4, dominate one niche, pick one. And then that way you're not, uh, jumping all around trying to figure all these nuances out for each niche, right? Like, so figure out the nuances of one niche, get good so, at that niche. I totally agree on. with that. We, I, I, I'm pretty sure there's a slide in here later that talks about that. And I think yeah. on the slide, we recommend one or two niches and we'll, we'll cover that when we get there. But I totally agree with Jim. Become a master. Chris Blair says become a master of your niche. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, it's, it's important because that's how you're going to create products that they want is by becoming a master of that particular audience. All right. So let's talk very quickly. Product market fit. Um, when you're when you're making your design, right, the whole idea, you have to make sure that the design is going to have a product market fit. Now, here's all I mean by this is like uh, in the past, I've seen new people uh, create products where like the the product itself is a very mature piece of jewelry. So it'd be like Love Knot, for example. Um, but then the the design has a like a little girl on it. Like it's like a with like a fairy, like where it's clear that the the product is really aimed for a mom that's got a daughter, let's say at eight or nine years old, something like that, like a young daughter. But the jewelry piece is very mature, probably way more mature 
than what a eight or a nine year old is ever going to wear. It's like that kind of thing. You need to think through and make sure that you've got kind of a product market fit before you start putting stuff out there. All right, next, uh, your product page. Again, I'm not going to spend tons of time here. You can go download these later. Uh, the biggest one for me is your image. You need to make sure it maintains congruency between what's in the ad and then what they see when they land on the product page. If, if, if those two things don't match, um, there's a good chance they're going to bounce because they're going to see the ad, click through, land on a product page. And if they can't easily identify that, like, hey, I'm looking at the same thing I just got an ad for, they're going to bounce. They're going to wonder if they've, they've clicked through the wrong place or whatever. So you need to make sure there's a congruency there. Um, and then also make sure you lead with an offer. It's always important to have some kind of offer uh, in the ad. All right, next, let's talk about the process. So again, this is very high level. We're going to talk through the process you can go through for the entire challenge, like all 100 of your kind of designs. This is the process that will work for you. So first, choose niches that are personally relevant. So this is where Jim just said, pick one niche. I've said pick one or two in the past. The idea though is you need to kind of, this is where you do want to box yourself in a little bit and become a master at the niche that you've picked. Now, if you don't know which niche uh, you should go into, I typically recommend pick a niche you're already part of. Everybody's a family, you're a son, uh, maybe you're a father, maybe you've got a girlfriend, uh, maybe you have a boyfriend whatever it is, figure out kind of the relationships that are special to you. And that's likely where you're going to be able to do your best work. You're going to be able to read a phrase. And if it, if it moves you emotionally, there's a good chance it's going to move other people emotionally as well. So Jim does this often. Jim's got a daughter and Jim will, uh, he uses his, his, he uses himself as a litmus test on whether or not a phrase is good, uh, specifically in the daughter niche. If it moves him emotionally, then he'll know it's good and he'll test it out. Yeah, I'm a giant sap. So like, especially around like my kids. So if it's a son or a daughter thing, um, and I get teary eyed, then I'm like, all right, we should test this. Um, and I, I, pro I was not sappy at all, like, uh, until I had kids and kids ruin you. Like if you're a big, strong, tough guy, kids will ruin you uh, because you will become yeah, a giant sap. True. Um, I'm the same, I'm the same way, by the way, when yeah. I first started got getting going in print on demand, I didn't have any kids yet. I picked the husband to wife niche just cause I, I, it's something I knew I'd been married right. for seven or eight years. I think when I started print on demand and it just, for me, it just clicked. I kind of knew it yeah. and, uh, I could kind of feel the phrases, uh, as I read them. Um, yeah, I totally agree with you. Like pick your, the stage of life you're in. If you're a younger person and you have a, a, a significant other, go into that niche, soulmate love niche, right? If you have kids, daughter, son, or wife. If you don't like your wife, daughter, son. Um, <laughs> you know, no, I don't know. If you're later in life, uh, but you got grandkids or you've got other, you know, your kids, or you, you want to focus on like the, uh, we've been together for so long, sub angle of, of a significant other niche, you know, figure out where you are in that stage of life and develop your sub niche around that. Also, don't be afraid to go after niches that you wouldn't think would work. I see yep. both his daughter, like two my bonus daughter. Uh oh, you guys still with me? Yeah, you were kind of you were you were stopping there, but you're there now. You're back. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say that uh, use a uh, don't be afraid to go into niches that you don't think will work. Like bonus daughter is one that I've seen work. Um, yep. I believe that's referring to like a stepdaughter or a daughter that's been adopted. I've seen bonus mom work. So I assume that stepmom could be mother-in-law. Like just don't be afraid to go into uh, those either. All right, Zappy, do you have any uh, uh, anything you wanna drop on this or should I move on? Um, I was, someone mentioned that they're single with no kids, so they're screwed. <laughs> so I just wanted to, you know, you know it's a okay if you don't daughter. have any of those, either, you know, we could do besties or soulmates. You could do mom or dad. Or again, that's what I meant. niche mom it down. Yeah. Maybe you, you love fishing. Like you have to have a mom or a dad. Yeah, or, or you can also do, uh, you can get a little dreamy and try to do future wife, right? Yeah. <laughs> you could do a future girlfriend one, but I don't know if that, I don't know if that one will land. <laughs> to the, to my, cr uh, to my crush. I to wanted to. Girlfriend. <laughs> to you could crush. ask someone to be your girlfriend or boyfriend with this piece of jewelry yeah there i love that i want to see that niche blow up right 
Oh, yeah, whichever what? one gets you the significant other, then that's the winning design. <laughs> hey, I think uh, oh, it might be. Awesome. We got to wait a couple of months, but uh, prom season. Will you go to prom with me? Prom. I'm calling it go. now. Whoever nails uh, the the prom, will you go to prom with me, Niche, next spring? Um. So another another one. Um, that is like gaining in popularity is uh every now and then it doesn't happen often every now and then we see a winner in the like apology uh niche yeah where it's like to my wife i'm so sorry for x and it's it's it, you never know what the person did but they're in deep doo-doo and that yep. will actually uh do fairly well so that's kind of an interesting yep. uh niche too so anyway let's uh let's keep going here shall we sure yep. all right um, so again, we're talking about kind of process here, uh, decide if you're going to do the design, you're going to hire a designer, you're going to hire a designer. Uh, you can go to like Fiverr you can go to Upwork. The shine on graphic design group is a great resource. You're going to do it on your own. Uh, I like Photoshop, but I've been doing graphic design for probably 20 years. I started when I was like 14 in high school. Um, if, if that's not you, that's completely okay. Uh, Canva is a great, uh, uh, newbie friendly, design platform and photo P is out there as well, uh, where I think they basically just ripped off Photoshop and put it inside of a, of a browser. Um, you also, after you get kind of, you figure out who's going to do the design or whatever, remember phrases are the most important part. You've heard us reference Franken phrases several times. This is kind of what that process looks like. You basically take a bunch of different phrases, you put them side by side, and then you grab the best parts of each one and you try to create your own unique, uh, coherent, Phrase. And this is just kind of an example how it's done. You can see here are the phrases right here. And then you can see there's highlighted sections in each phrase. That would be the punchline or the, the piece that you want to keep. And then you just kind of stack them up and you shuffle them around and you, you make kind of your own unique phrase. We did this at scale in Trello. So we actually had a Trello board just chock full of all these different phrase components. And then what we would do is we'd look at the components and then we would start to kind of piece together our own unique phrases. I believe Ronnie and Suhail use a spreadsheet. Whatever you decide to use, you're, you're going to need probably a tool to help you stay organized there um, to create your phrases. All right. Uh, you guys can look at that kind of on your own. Uh, this one is kind of important. Give yourself a schedule, right? This is a 100-day challenge. The more this work you front load, probably the greater chance of success you're going to have. So what I mean by that is get your phrases, get your designs, get it, get all of that kind of done as quickly as you can. And then the rest of the, the year, you can just be doing your testing, right? That would be uh, how I would personally uh, attack this um, if I were in your shoes. Uh, you can give yourself your own schedule. We've got one for you here. If you want, you can just click into this calendar. Uh, we've got a schedule for you, like a publishing schedule. You can check it out. All right. When it comes to the advertising, and we've got some methods for you at the end of this that we'll cover, pick one or two methods and then just stick to them. Uh, I see this time and time again, especially with new people. You're going to spend uh, or, or be tempted to spend 80% of your time learning Facebook ad methods and only 20% of your time doing the phrases and the product research and all that. And I'm telling you, that is completely upside down. You want to spend 80% of your time on the product and the phrases and getting that right and 20% of your time on the Facebook ad stuff. That is absolutely how you want to do this. Um, the other thing I see newbies struggle with often is you'll spend all this time on four or five designs and then you're going to start testing and they aren't going to work. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to YouTube and try to find new testing methods for Facebook, right? Rather than going back to the drawing board on the phrases uh, uh, and the, the, the product itself. And I'm telling you, you want to avoid that trap. That is a trap. You will be spinning out new Facebook ads uh, and testing methods until you are literally broke when you should be spending all of your time trying to find a product that is a winner and that resonates uh, with your niche. Uh, Jim Zappi, what are your thoughts on that? No, I totally agree. I mean, we, we've already covered that. The, it's the phrase that pays, right? So um, I've scaled. This will be my eighth quarter four that I'm scaling. Uh, and when you find a winner, when Facebook just is like, oh, catch, and, and it's just so random, you'll be like, uh, little blips, little blips, little blips, and all of a sudden something takes off and it's like a whole current, no matter what you do, it works. No matter yeah. how much money you throw at it, it just does it. And it doesn't matter if you do a CBO or an ABO or a big budget or a little budget, or you just duplicate it a whole bunch of times 
it just works. And that's because product fit market at the right time. Dude, this, I, this is actually my theory on how all these goofy Facebook ad strategies get out there. I think literally what a lot of people do is as they test products, they constantly think it's the method that doesn't work. So they're testing new products and they're trying new methods and they're testing new products and trying new methods. And then eventually they hit the product market fit and it's with some goofy esoteric method that they come up with, you know, over 30 iterations and they think it's the method that got them up the mountain, right? Right. And that's, I, I truly believe that's how you find all these goofy methods uh, out there on YouTube. When the fact of the matter is what Jim just said is 100% true. If you hit a winning product, you can do almost li- like, you can do almost literally anything to it and it still works. It still yeah. works. I've yeah. seen that time and time and time again. You can sell a, a great product with bad marketing, but you can't sell a crappy product with fantastic complex marketing. <laughs> 100% agree with you. Yeah. Uh, I don't even think Tim Bird could sell uh, some of the crap designs uh, that I've tested in the past, right? And that guy is like, he's a master at this stuff. That's just how it is in in this world. You got to get the product market fit down. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, So again, talking process here. So after you get kind of your, your plan together, you get your schedule together, you get your phrases, you get your designs. I would try to front load some of that if you can. If you're the type of person you just kind of want to be a plotter, where you just kind of every day you're doing the one design, the one phrase, the one test, that is completely fine. That the, the challenge is designed for that. Or if you want to be the person that creates all 100 in the first month and then spends the next 60 days or 70 days uh, uh, testing one design, uh, one design a day, you can do that too. Whatever it is, figure out kind of what you want to do, create a schedule. You want to make sure you're launching the campaigns consistently. If you do all this work and you're not putting it out there on Facebook, you're not spending money and buying data, you're never going to know if you're sitting on a winner. Um, and keep in mind, you're always one product away from literally everything changing, right? Mm-hmm. The difference between a losing product and a winning product is, is immense as you can possibly imagine. They're completely different animals. And you're one product away from kind of flipping a switch and being in that zone. So you want to make sure you're keep testing, stay motivated, stay passionate. Remember that you're one product away from adding those six figures uh, to your bank account. That's what I tell myself. Um, And then after you hit a winning product, then you can come in and do all the fun stuff, testing different audience sizes, testing different campaign methods, uh, and all of that stuff. All right, so then we just have some uh, safety checks with the process. You know, make sure you're checking your copy. We kind of talked about that. Grammarly is a great tool. Hemingway app's a good tool. Uh, Getting a buddy system. Jim mentioned going to Fiverr, uh, which I agree with. Uh, In the challenge group, we're actually going to be uploading some free designs for people just to kind of help you along so you can get your free designs in the challenge group. We're also going to be doing weekly check-ins. So I think Tammy uh, is going to go live once a week. And then we're also talking about doing some Zoom calls where all the members can jump on and talk to each other uh, as well, just so you guys can help hold each other accountable and share knowledge of what's working and isn't working or where you're stuck, that kind of thing, right there together on a large uh, uh, Zoom call. And then if you get stuck, make sure you're reaching out to support, uh, reach out to account managers. But I would, I would say if you're if you're stuck with the process, like the phrases, the, the testing methods, the things that are not uh, necessarily related to our platform or something like that, ask right in the group. Um, ask right in the group, drop your question. A ton of people jump in and you guys can help each other. Again, part of what's magical about this is we're not competing against each other, right? We are really competing against somebody going to Walmart and buying a gift or going to Target and buying a gift. Those are our competitors, not each other in this. A rising tide will raise all ships. The better we all do, the better ads we can all make, the better store experience we provide, the more people will be buying online. That's why a rising tide raises all ships. Somebody may buy from seller A this year, right? But if they have a great experience, they may buy from seller B next year, right? That's why it's important. We're all into this in this together. We provide the best uh, support and experience that we possibly can uh, to our buyers. All right, then staying organized, <clears throat> staying organized. So uh, I like to use Trello. Trello is kind of a place I've been living for at least five years. Um, I've got a really That's old fun. Trello account. That is where I like to do all my organization. My graphic design boards are in there. My product creation boards are in there. My daily to-do and task management lists are in there. Some people really like Asana. So Travis Patel is an Asana guy. Um, He likes Asana. These are just project management tools. They can help you stay organized with your phrases, your designs, things like that. 
Uh, Jim Zappi, what are you guys using? Because uh, you're doing massive volumes uh, every week. What are you What are you using to stay organized? M mostly Trello. Um, we use Trello. We communicate via Slack, um, and then uh, I use Google Tasks for my task, like individual, like to do lists or whatever. Um, but for our message card designs and things like that, uh, we use Trello. Yeah. If you're If you're just a you know, a solopreneur, you're doing it by yourself and you just, you do what works for you to keep it organized. If you're working with other people, then you might, you know, then you can go into something else where maybe it's easier to share things, but between Trello and even just sometimes a simple Google spreadsheet or mm -hmm. Microsoft office spreadsheet, just to keep track. Okay. Here's the phrase. And you know, maybe here's the link to the product that I created. Uh, that's what really helps me, you know, keep that organized spreadsheet. <laughs> no, I dig that. Um, and Ronnie and Suhail, uh, also use kind of a spreadsheet method as well. So whatever works for you, again, you know, find something that works for you. What's important though, is you want to stay organized. That's what's important. A hundred designs over a hundred days. There's some moving parts in there. You need to keep your arms around them. Sure. Um, so we've got some kind of uh, a little bit of a process for how you can do this. Here's uh, just a screenshot. One of our Trello boards where we kind of keep track of things. You can see we've got Designs ready to go to upload, some that are uploaded but haven't been tested, uh, some that are uploaded to the platform uh, and store because we like to test on both. Uh, we've got uh, winning prospects here. We have Spanish designs we test. We like to get into some other languages. Uh, granddaughter design. I mean, you make your list however you want, mm -hmm. right? But uh, uh, and whatever works best for you. This is kind of how we've done it in the past. You can also see I've got a phrase fodder list here. This is where my freaking phrases uh, were born. So Whatever you choose to do, just you need to stay organized. <clears throat> so again, we just got some more info there. And now we got two testing methods and then some Q&A. So Jim, I'll let you run us through uh, the testing methods here. And you just tell me when you're ready to uh, flip a slide or whatever. Take it okay. away. Yeah. So this is kind of um, a variation of uh, what we did on the shot of espresso for last week around budgeting. Um, so if I, I won't spend time on like proper budgets or that, if, if we had a video on, um, shot of espresso there. Um, so if you really want to dive into like, I think it's a 30 minute long video about, uh, budgeting and what works for you, definitely go and look at that video. Uh, this is more of a bumped up version of the one, a couple of slides ago, right? Where you were talking about penny slots doing $5 a day, uh, on an ad set level. Um, so you can run as an ABO, um, $25 a day the exact same audience duplicate it because as long as it's in the same niche, right? So if you're mastering that niche, every audience should be the same audience or very, very similar audience. If you really, you know, get freaked out about the auction overlap or whatever. Uh, and then all you're really testing in this is the phrases, right? So you're, you're just, I'm phrase testing. So therefore my ads change. That's why you see phrase one, two, three, four, but the audience stays the same. Um, so you can run this test as either an ABO or a CBO and the shot of espresso, uh, that we covered our current methodology is a one, one, one CBO. So one campaign, one ad set, one ad, and then we duplicate the campaign. So this is a slight variation, same exact, um, psychology or methodology behind it. It's just instead of a CBO, multiple campaigns, it's one campaign as an ABO. Now, let me ask if, so do you, um, so you've got your one ABO campaign mm -hmm. and then inside it are housed all your ad sets, right? And Correct. each ad set is basically a new phrase that you're Correct. testing. So do you just, do you keep this open for days and weeks? Meaning like you're just turning stuff off and every time you have a new phrase, you're going in there and loading up the new phrase and just letting the campaign itself compile data over several weeks. Or is this more a thing where it's like you kind of get the five phrases you want to test and you create the campaign and you run through the test on the five all simultaneously, then you turn it off and create a new one later. How are you I think it depends. That? So if I'm coming at this from a seller standpoint, right, that it depends on how you're, you're approaching the challenge really. So if you are going to do your one a day, sort of, I'm going to do one phrase and I'm going to do one phrase testing each day, then I would use this as my hub. Like the ABO campaign is my testing hub. And then every day that I'm, adding that new phrase to test. I'm just adding a, one new ad set, one new ad set, whatever it is. Um, we personally, we do a, a bunch of prep work first and have a set of 30 phrases that we want to test at one time. So then when we set our test up, it's all 30 phrases at the exact same time. 
and then we have our sort of catches um, that we turn off. You know, if it if we don't have a link click after this much spend and it's it's uh, above four dollars, we turn it off. If we spend twenty five dollars uh, with no add to carts, we turn it off. If it's after fifty dollars and we're not profitable, we turn it off. Um, so that allows, even though we're at, we're, we're still running at twenty five dollars a day, we're letting it run for at least two full days if you got like sale one on day one run at day two did it get another sale if it did fantastic then that goes into all right let's see what we can do with that particular phrase so i guess it just depends on how they approach the 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 challenge i just want to take a quick minute too to identify what our acronyms are a lot of people are still new to abo cbo Mm -hmm. so what we're talking about here abo is ad budget optimization which means that the budget for your ad is optimized at the ad set level. Now, CBO is where the budget is optimized at the campaign level. CBO is campaign budget optimization. So it's just the difference of how the budget is allocated. That's the best way I can probably describe it. But that's yeah, where, it's, yeah, you it's know, just where wanna, you set the budget. Um, without a, uh, a better visual, I worry about confusing people more, but I'm going to try it anyway. If this is an ad set budget optimization one. You can see the the budget is set at the ad sets, right? So each of these ad sets will get $25 a day spend. But if it were a CBO campaign, you set your budget right here. So let's say you had a $25 a day CBO campaign, then your campaign is going to choose where to allocate the budget based on the performance of each individual ad set. So it'll take that 25 bucks and spread it out across all of the uh, ad sets. Correct. So, all right. uh, Ready for the next one? Yes, go ahead. All right, let's do it. All right, so this is uh, a variation. Actually, I need to update that slide, but anyway. Um, so this is a slight variation that uh, I've we're testing more on a scaling phase right now, but I think it could work just fine for testing too. Um, so what it is is you have a CBO campaign, and let's say we're going to test 20 phrases at one time, and we were going to budget $25 a piece if we were going to do our ABO setup. So instead of having each ad set say, okay, you're 25 bucks, you're 25 bucks, we go 20 phrases times $25 equals 500. That's the total account spend on that campaign for the whole day. And that's what we set our campaign budget as. Okay. And then so uh, we're allowing, we're budgeting, we're telling Facebook we're willing to spend up to $500 a day across all of our 20 ad sets. And then each ad set has a duplication in the ad. So it's the exact same ad. It's just duplicated one time. It's a little bit more. This method is a little bit more advanced for for brand new people. Totally agree with that. Um, In the ad set, there is a setting on a CBO campaign. If you're editing the ad set level, you can set a minimum amount of spend that you want. Uh, And I would set with this budgeting. I would set it at $5 per ad set. Now that forces Facebook to spend at least $5 a day at each ad set level, and then it can choose. And I do that on purpose because if we don't, if we don't set that minimum amount, Facebook a lot of times, especially nowadays, will just pick one or two audiences and just dump all the budget regardless of performance. So by requiring Facebook to spend a, a minimum of five bucks a day on each ad set, then that gives a, a Facebook a, a better um, visual, a better uh, a collection of data across all of the ad sets. And then it has a better luck of optimizing correctly. So um, I have a question for you related to CBO and iOS 14. Yes. So since tracking is kind of jacked, um, at least in ads manager, are you finding CBO campaigns doing well anymore? Um, Honestly, in my recent testing, I found that CBO is working better than ABO uh, longer term. So what we've seen and what I've seen in Ads Manager over the hundreds and hundreds of tests that we've run over the last few months is ABO seems to work well on day one. And then it might work a little bit on day two, but then by day three, day four, it dies. Um, and I don't know if that's, uh, I'm guessing it's because one, the budgets that we're setting on our ad sets are too small for it to gather. It'll never gather 50 conversions purchases in one week. So Facebook after three or four days tends to give up on it. Um, 
So by putting that budget all on the campaign level, you're giving that budget more, more opportunities to optimize to the things that are going to work the best. Um, so I'm actually seeing CBO work better overall. Uh, now, mind you, we do have our own tracking solutions, right? That we talked about uh, on previous shots of espresso where I'm not looking at ads manager to make my optimization decisions. I'm looking in UTM tag data to make those decisions. Yeah, make sure you check out uh, <clears throat> Jim's shots of espresso. Uh, Jim and Zappy shots of espresso. Uh, I think it was called how to win, how to how to win the war on ad tracking, where he goes into exactly how you can set up uh, the tracking yourself for free. It's a totally yep. free solution, and you can see uh, basically we solved the tracking issue 100, percent where you get near 100 percent accurate tracking from your ads. Um, the platform's got it built in yep. already in the product analytics. You can look at UTM metrics, and then on uh, Shopify. It's a little more difficult to get to, but it's in there. You got to click through three or four menus to kind of find it. But if you yep. use UTM tracking, uh, you basically solve the tracking issue 100%. Yep. And so, we are still, we're chugging ahead on trying to figure out the attribution side too. And there, we might have some progress there in the nearish future. Um, a lot of testing has to be done on it though. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't just be the algorithm. Uh, Correct. This is what I've always wanted to default to yep. anyway, is like, yep. the, since the tracking issue is solved, you can optimize your own ads. You don't have to necessarily depend on Facebook. Uh, Correct. Don't get me wrong. Um, their optimization can help, right? I'm not trying to diminish that. However, uh, if you have your own tracking problem solved, you're in the game, right? Yep. You, as long as you can see which ad is performing well for you and which audience and that kind of thing, you can you can you can maximize that. So, anyway, you can become your own algorithm. All right. So, I want to just reiterate before we move on a couple things. Mm -hmm. Pick one or two Facebook testing methods and then stick to those through the entire contest. J do not be jumping around all over the place. Right. You're just you're going to be spinning your wheels. And right. nine times out of ten, especially if you're new, the testing process is not the issue. It is the product and the phrase and the market fit. I guarantee it, right? Nine times out of 10. So spend all your time troubleshooting there, not with your testing method. The next thing I want right. to say is if you're not into the Facebook side of things, that's okay too. Everything we've talked about here with the exception of the Facebook stuff can be done on Etsy, right? Mm -hmm. get, those, get those designs up on Etsy. Get the 100 designs up on Etsy. Make sure you're doing your keyword search, research and things like that. And you're kind of SEO optimizing each of your listings. So you have a good chance of success. Keep in mind that in Q4, millions of buyers get activated, tens of millions of buyers. Uh, Christmas in the, in the wet in the United States is a compulsory gift giving holiday. Like mm -hmm. you're not just buying one gift. You're buying gifts for your entire immediate Everybody. family most of your extended family, and a good chunk of your friends, right? Yep. You've got a lot of gifts to purchase. Most people, as soon as they're like, oh, crap, you know, it's it's after Thanksgiving and I still haven't bought a gift for XYZ family member or whatever, they're going to be going to known platforms like an Amazon and Etsy, things like that, to be doing a lot of their buying. Get your stuff on there early so you have time to get optimized inside those search engines and that your product is showing up when all these buyers start to rush into these digital stores to make their uh, purchases. If you're on the Facebook side, there's still plenty of coin to be had. Um, new millionaires are made literally every single year just by selling on Facebook alone. Uh, so Facebook is still where we like to encourage everybody to go. There's no other place like it when it comes to scale. I've never seen anybody go from zero to six figures inside of like 48 hours except on Facebook. I mean, it is literally where you can do just mind blowing uh, numbers. So all paths are viable here. If you can do all three, Amazon, Etsy, and Facebook, I would encourage that quite honestly. Uh, don't completely box yourself in. If you've got to pick one and you've got the, the testing budget, Facebook is a great, great place to be. If you don't have that kind of budget, Etsy is another fantastic place to be. Uh, all right. Should we get to some Q and A? Yeah. All right. Let's Love do to. it. <clears throat> so, We've got Q&A for a little while. Start dropping them in the chat below. We're about 30 seconds um, behind you in the chat. I'm going to go through some of these comments here uh, real quick. Kathy says, the uh, UTM tricks you gave were incredible. I, on I only use that now for all my decision-making. Congratulations, uh, 
Kathy, you know, Kathy actually messaged me, said she caught out her, uh, she had an ad agency she was working with. She caught them out using uh, the UTM tricks that you uh, provided. So awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, by the way, really appreciate you guys for running such live sessions. It gives great platform and support for beginners. Uh, you got it. GSG. <laughs> um, let's see. Here's a good question. For someone who's just beginning, how much minimum budget is required to run Facebook ads? So unfortunately, I can't give you an answer, right? Like I can't just say you have to run $100. You have to run $5,000. So that's, that's a decision you have to come up with what you're comfortable spending. Um, what I can tell you is um, you can absolutely find a winner running $5 of ad set a day budgets. It's just going to not be as consistent at $5 a day. Um, if anything, I would suggest if you're running $5 a day and you find a winner, um, be very, uh, that's the right word. Um, you're going to need to like create constantly new versions of the ads to get the best part of the pool of, of people. So it's like, if you got $5 a day and you get a sale, you probably won't get a sale the next day. Odds are. Right. So if you don't get a sale for two days in a row before, so you've got a sale within the $5, you've now spent $15 and you're still at one sale. While that audience is still profitable for you, turn that one off, duplicate it, start it up on a day one. If that, hopefully that makes sense. Um, because what we're seeing, especially on ABO and smaller budgets, is it works the best on day one. If it's gonna work, which there's no guarantee that it's gonna work, but if it's gonna work, it works the best on day one. And then it's sort of like you have to constantly follow up with, okay, this worked before I start going negative on this ad set, I'll let it run. And then you gotta figure out where that cutoff point is and say, I wanna make at least $5 on this thing, duplicate it and run again. And you literally just did a guide on uh, budget stuff, right? Yes, absolutely. I would highly recommend that. Yep. Yeah. So, and that was, it was last week, right? Yep. Yeah. Last Friday yeah. we dropped it. So go, go check out the guide. Uh, you'll find it in the group type shot of espresso uh, and you'll be able to find the guide. We are going to try to get all those housed in one spot inside the platform. Mm -hmm. We're just not quite there yet. So hang tight everybody. And we'll have a centralized location uh, for those. Okay. Let's see here. Facebook users and newbie and learn a lot. Gives me immense motivation. Uh, you got it, buddy. Uh, here's one from Facebook user. I would add that if you have a true winner, uh, spend 80, 90% of the effort and scale it back off on testing other designs. Q4 is short. What do you think of that? I totally agree. Um, now expect a, a Q4 ramp up is going to look sort of like this. You're going to test and test and test, and you're going to get ups and downs and, and ups and downs. And then all of a sudden it's going to catch and it's going to go like this and go straight up. And then around December 15th, it's going to go straight back down. Um, I, I've That's what I've seen. That trend, it's like a straight up, and then it looks really good for about two or three weeks or whatever, and then it's straight down uh, after like that, sort of like the obligatory cutoff date of people buying online. And it's usually around the 15th for me. Um, I, it might be different. I know that uh, Shine On might be have, have a different thing. Uh, but with all of my experience, right around the 15th, 16th, it's just like... We usually push all the way into the uh, 17th, 18th, or 19th. Okay. So, yeah, that's the benefit of you guys delivering from the United States. And and we're going to be in Europe this year as well. Um, that's fantastic. So I, I'm so excited for that. In Europe as well. Yeah. And for sellers, you have a great opportunity with Shine On because we can ship things very fast and later into the season. So when a lot of the other print-on-demand companies are, have all their cutoffs, mm -hmm. we're still going uh, we're shipping from Florida and we can, those extra few days as you get closer to Christmas can be huge, huge days yeah. for you. So it's a huge benefit. Um, so yeah, I totally agree with what, uh, with what this Facebook user said. Uh, if you got something working and you have a limited budget, which let's be honest, unless you're a fortune 100 company, everybody's budget is limited to, to something. Uh, I would focus on making as printing as much money as you can. Yeah, and I would also add um, that you know we're you know we're, we do we're doing hundred 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 challenge, but you really only need one or two products. I don't mm -hmm. know if we can re reiterate that enough. But the people that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars aren't doing it with a hundred products. They're doing it with just 
one or two that they that popped off and they were able to scale profitably and just keep iterating and changing it a little bit, you know, figuring out how to get the most juice out of that one or two products. That's it. Yep. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, I, I totally, which again is why like in the challenge, set yourself a goal already of doing a hundred products because like it's going to give you the greatest chance of finding the one or two that just knock it out of the park for you. Right. But I totally agree with Zappy. It's, it's, it's the one or two is where you're going to make yep. 95% or more of all your revenue. That that's this thing. It's the Pareto principle skewed to the extremes when mm -hmm. it comes to this stuff. Right. That and, uh, and from a, that is, look it up. And from a technical standpoint, uh, if you're running one pixel on for all of your testing and all that stuff, Facebook really doesn't have a great ability to optimize at giant scale more than one product at a time. That's why most people, you, no matter who I've talked to in e -com world, if you're running on what like one pixel, one product, one scale. So if you find that one product, guess what? Your challenge of testing is done. Now the challenge is, is how high can you scale that? Totally. All right. So here's one. Does humor work in the daughter niche? Well, yes. I mean, everybody loves humor. Um, but I will say um, I have seen more successful things, uh, POD things, work the reverse. And by that, I mean not going from the older generation to the younger but the younger generation being funny to the old generation. So if yeah, I was going to do that, that, I would do way. like a, a dad gift or a mom gift. And it's usually, I've seen a lot of successful uh, designs work from, from daughter to dad as like a funny phrase there versus um, going from dad or mom to daughter. Yeah, I, I totally uh, agree with that. You really have to think about the recipient. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a good one. Can you suggest me some ways to target the sister niche? I'm having a hard time identifying the audience of my ad with this niche. So I would not spend a lot of time on trying to find the perfect audience to get your design to work. Instead, I would go with uh, target like sister or sibling or uh, friend or something super broad like that, and then test a whole bunch of phrases against that audience. So find the most relevant audience to for sister and then target a whole bunch of phrases to that and see which phrase works the best in that audience. Zappy, what do you think? Yeah, that's really ultimately the best way to go. There's, you can sometimes, if you're thinking more like birthday or something like that, you can do birthday in the next 30 days, 60 mm -hmm. days, target women. And the fact that it says, you know, to my sister or my beloved sister or whatever you end up doing, that's sort of its own way to filter out the people that aren't going to be relevant to just in the phrase itself. Um, here's one for Zappy. Uh, how do you iterate to get the most juice out of an item? Can you get into it, please? Yeah. So it's a lot about, you know, a lot of times starting out simple with our background designs. And then as you find a winning phrase, you know, just on a simple background, then it may be considering, you know, okay, who is this to and from? Is there a different design that I might, test against that original that, you know, test the background that might work better. Is there a different, um, you know, should I go ahead instead of using, if I was using an image that shine on provides when I upload the image, is there a way that I can go ahead and get this product in hand, take my own photo of it and use that as the ad image. So it's testing ad images, it's testing, you know, your headline or the copy in the ad itself. Um, and sometimes it's also testing the actual background that you've used for or the jewelry itself too. So again, it's when you're finding something that's working and then doing different iterations to see if you can actually improve your results based on some modifications. Uh, here's a good one. Do we have to have a busy uh, Facebook page for Facebook ad account, business account to, I think what they're asking is like, do you need a page with a lot of likes and a lot of engagement in order for Facebook to give your ads preference? So I, I'll take this one, I guess. Um, the short answer is no. You can successfully scale one product uh, regardless of the interactivity or the, the likes that are on your page. Uh, if you're trying to build a brand, then that's when I would look at actually developing a page and then a group 
Um, you only get about a 2% organic drop when you go to a page and you get about a 10 to 12% organic drop if you go to the group. Um, so it really depends on what your overall goal is. If your goal is to churn and burn a bunch of designs and just make cash, then no, a, a, a big, uh, very active business, uh, Facebook page is not necessary. All right. We're getting kind of down to the end of the uh, questions here. So maybe we'll just do one or two more. Um, this one's kind of in the same vein as the previous one. How much time do you spend building your Facebook page uh, from where you promote your products? I would just say keep it, you know, keep it simple. <laughs> That's what, you know, put a put a nice, you know, banner image, whatever you want to call it, headline image on your Facebook page. Have a profile image, and you know, maybe make some posts or at least post some memes or just something interesting related to your audience to make it look like there's something. But I wouldn't spend a lot of time worrying about yeah. it. Yeah. Again, it, 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 the answer is determined by your goal, right? And we can't answer that for you either. It's uh, if you're building a brand you're going to want to put effort into your page and build a group and have a full social presence and all that stuff. If you're trying to sell a design, then that's not nearly as necessary. Focus on crumbing up with phrases and put them on there and doing the testing. I've seen, I personally, I've seen that. So for, if the question is how fancy does it need to be to get sales? Right. I will tell you that I've seen that's this not. work every way you can imagine. I have mm -hmm. literally seen people make a page and put one post like they'll fill it out. They'll have a cover and a little profile image and they'll try to fill out the about section and they'll have one post. And the post is usually of the ad yep. that they're running. And I've seen people literally scale that way before with like, you've been looking at my Facebook pages, huh? Huh? You've been looking at my Facebook pages, huh? I'm just, it, it doesn't, what I have found though. Now tell me if you've seen this, Jim, mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that as, as late as probably 2018, I found that if I got my Facebook pages to at least a thousand likes, I saw drops in my CPMs. Yeah, um, I mean, there's there is a a demonstrable benefit to having an active Facebook page. However, it's it's sort of a, a opportunity cost that you have to like figure out. Like, if your if your goal is to make money in Q, in Q4, then go make money in Q4 and then figure out getting a thousand likes on a Facebook page and, and things of that nature, because there are, there are um, intangible benefits, meaning there's not like a hard data. Like if you have this number of likes, you will save this much on CPMs. But I've always noticed that if we run a little bit like $5 a day in a page like campaign, and I don't even care what it, what it yields us. If the like cost per like is good. Um, it does seem to help stability with our, other conversion ads. Well, and so let me ask you this though, because I can't remember who I learned this method from may have been Will, uh, Hey Merrill. Mm -hmm. I would just, I literally would run, um, dollar a day, a like campaign worldwide. I'd be able to get likes for about a penny. And so in 10 or $15 of ad spend, I'm at a thousand yeah. likes on the page already. I've yep. always found that to be worth the effort if it results in a drop of even uh, in your CPMs of even by a dollar or 50 cents or 25 cents. Right. No, I, I mean, if it's realistically, we're talking about a 15 to $20 total budget, right? To seed yeah. your page. So yeah. I think that's well worth the investment. Just like I think um, for a new person trying to figure out, I have X number of dollars that I can spend on this deal total. Where should I allocate funds? Right. Yeah, that's that's fair. And the other thing I would say is too, you don't want to look, you don't want to over process this thing, meaning right. like it's very easy for the whole page to just become a distraction in and of itself. I mean, where you're exactly. worried about posting to it all the time and making sure it's right. And you want to avoid all that. That goes back to that opportunity cost. Um, uh, but anyway, that's interesting to kind of hear your thoughts, but I've seen it shake out in all kinds of ways before. Me too. Like I, I, I do believe that there is a, a long, um, there is a longer term benefit to building out a page and having an active brand for multiple reasons, right? Um, but if 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 our sellers, the, the folks that are here, uh, immediate goal is just let's make some cash. And then once we have some money in the bank, then we can like, yes, this is proof of concept. We've made money at it. Now let's make a business out of it. I would prioritize testing and scaling um, 
your design so that you've got that pile of cash to be able to invest in the other stuff. Um, right. So it's, it's sort of not, it's not a either, or it's the order you do them in. All right. So we're going to do two more, uh, and we're wrapping this up. So I think I can take this one from Stephanie. What's the update of ETA for the Etsy integration? Uh, it's within 30 days. I don't have a hard, uh, published date on that, but we are within 30 days of seeing this thing live. Um, I am going to have another video that's going to come out a little later today. Talk about the integration, uh, Amsterdam, a bunch of new products we have coming your way. You're not going to want to miss the video. It's going to be awesome. Uh, it's going to go, man, it should be early afternoon that it hits the uh, platform. And I've got some screenshots of the integration. It, it's, it's simple stuff. It's nothing fancy, but you'll see that like we're getting close to uh, launching that thing. Okay. And then the second question, uh, shoot, where'd it go? Okay. So this one uh, from Ellen, do you go with the base variant or the mahogany boxes? So I think what they're asking there is in your ads, are you running the ad for like kind of the base, the free box, the Oreo box? Or are you running the mahogany box? I think that's what they're asking. Mm -hmm. I would say mahogany boxes. Um, you see, again, it's 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 always the test it, but mahogany boxes look great if you, especially if you're doing video that shows that nice light coming on inside and you know getting a little bit of a, a view of it. Uh, I mean, it looks I, great. And I then, can tell you our take later. rate. Yeah, our take rate on the mahogany boxes went way up when we started advertising the mahogany box. Yeah, because what you start seeing is people will click on the ad based on seeing the mahogany box and they get mm -hmm. to the site and they have the option. They're like, well, it's a little bit more, but that's what I came here for. And and so they, you're getting that extra average order value increase because they're picking up that box. Yeah, so. It's a 20 extra bucks. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks, you guys, for hanging out with me for an hour and a half. Thank thanks you, for having us. for joining us. Yeah. Um, remember, come back to this post in like 10 or 15 minutes. You'll refresh it. There will be a link at the bottom of the post where you can download all the slides uh, that we covered today. Also, this video will make its way to our YouTube channel where you can watch it in the future as well. Um, we had a lot of people say that they really enjoyed the, the value and the nuggets that were being dropped. So if you want to revisit any of that stuff, you can go watch it on the YouTube channel. If you want to sign up for the challenge, shineonchallenge.com is where you do that. Shineonchallenge.com. It's got its own Facebook group. Tammy, who is amazing part of the Shine On team, is in there leading uh, the group. She's doing weekly calls, dropping in free message cards, all kinds of stuff. It's a great structure uh, uh, that creates accountability for you as you move into Q4. And it should increase your chances of hitting that $100,000 uh, in revenue, especially if you've never done it before. So everybody, Thank you so much. Appreciate you joining and uh, hope you have a great uh, rest of your day and weekend. Take Thanks, care, guys. Everybody. Thank you, everybody. Yep. Appreciate you all. Hey, hey, Michael here again. Thank you so much for checking out today's video. If you like the content, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And there's one more thing I want you to do. Check out the links in the description below. I want you to look at the link to shineon.com where you can sign up and become a seller with us today. It literally takes 60 seconds and it could change your life. Secondly, I want you to go to our Facebook group. It's the most engaged e-commerce group on the planet. We're constantly sharing important tips, tricks, and things like that that can help you on your seller journey and level up your e-commerce game. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I hope you have a great one. Take care.